This Miller Upstart College Fitness here got some more wave aspects to be looking at here. So let us just get started, shall we? So we've looked at this before, but there's a couple things that I want to point out now. So I'm just going to fly off and strike me in my face. Rather not have that on camera, or really just rather not be in the face with something. It's okay. Okay, so. <clears throat> Talked about what is a wave, disturbance. We're looking at transverse waves, great. We've got a transverse wave that we can set up a little disturbance and it bounces back and forth. So the point that we want to look at right now is that bouncing back and forth, wave reflection. So I produce this little disturbance right here. And it goes and travels and it strikes really that boundary there at the end and then reflects back and then it strikes my boundary here where I'm pitching it and reflects back and forth until its energy is dissipated and that's basically that. But there's some nice things to be looking at right here and that is what happens as it bounces back and comes back the other way. If you look closely there's an inversion of the wave it sort of flips its orientation after it reflects off of that boundary. So it's kind of fast but Hopefully you can kind of see that kind of inverts after it reflects off. And that's because this boundary here doesn't have the ability to go up and down like well, the displacement of the particles that would happen otherwise. Now it turns out if this was a boundary that could go up and down, then you don't get an inversion of the pulse. If we had a pulse that was above the equilibrium position, it would travel here. This part would go up and then it would travel back the other way in the same exact manner. But because we've got ourselves what we call a hard boundary or a stable boundary, I guess, the wave, the wave peak, we'll say, comes in like this and it's got to diminish because this point right here can't go up and down. So it diminishes down and then it undergoes this inversion and comes back out upside down. And then, well, if this is a hard boundary too, it undergoes another inversion, so you kind of get this sort of aspect going when we've got this secured boundary. I guess maybe it's a better name for it. So you can kind of see that as it bounces back and forth. Just stop really quickly. A little bit messy on this, but that's what we get nonetheless. So here's a question for you. What happens if I keep on producing a wave instead of just a pulse? If I keep on having a wave go, and what's going to happen is, well, if the wave travels this way, then it reflects off and it comes this way. And ultimately, if I keep on making a wave coming this way, the reflected wave starts overlapping with the incoming wave. And there will be this continual overlap as long as I still make the wave. And what we get is interference then. We get the interference of an incoming wave and a reflected wave. And well, interference happens, and what do we do? We look at it and see what can be the case. So we could get something very chaotic happening, depending on how it reflects back and forth, or we can get something really neat that happens, something like this. Ooh, look at it. it just looks like the whole string is going up and down. And they say, well, you're just making it go up and down. And that's true, but I'm just doing it on this side. When I go up on this side, it reflects and it comes back the other way, but it's in sync with me going back up and down again on this side. So we get what's called a standing wave here because it seems like it's just standing still, but really it's made of two waves interfering with one another. The incident wave going this way and then the reflective wave going in the other direction. But it takes a specific frequency, a specific <clears throat> period of the oscillation for that to take place. But there's some other frequencies that I can produce other standing waves. So if I go like, it's a little bit harder at this side, I'm gonna twist it because it's a little bit easier to see. But I can produce where well, there's two portions that are oscillating. It's better if I actually do this. Too fast, sorry. So here's one. And if I double that speed, there we go. I can get this two separate pulses, and if I kept going faster and faster, I could get three separate pulses or four separate pulses, not pulses, but sections that are oscillating up and down. And, well, that's kind of hard for me to do, 
to go really super duper fast, but I've got a little apparatus here that it ultimately just goes up and down, and I can control the frequency that it goes up and down at, and I can produce certain standing waves. And what I want to do is look at those. So I could go like this, produce this one standing wave with just one section oscillating up and down. I could probably double it and do two sections, but beyond that, it's really difficult, so start doing it like this. This is just a little transformer here. Changing the length with just some other things. Now look at right there. Four separate sections oscillating up and down. There's a specific frequency that produces that. I change this frequency. I change some other things. So get this one dialed in here. Four plus six seven eight nine ten. That really depends on how I'm doing it. Yeah, there's a nice one. About six, six separate sections. Again, depending on the frequency, some other things to determine, like the wave speed and the length of the string, you've got different standing waves that can be produced. You've got these locations here that undergo no displacement, and then we've got these positions here that undergo the maximum displacement. Again, this is because of interference. Incoming wave, so it's coming this way, then reflecting back, overlapping spatially, and producing this interference pattern, which is a very stable interference pattern. But the point is, there's interference going on, and we want to be able to mathematically approach this and sort of uh, get things going from there. So, let me take this up, out of the way, to kind of break this down. Whoa, whoa. It's almost bottom there. This is so we're going to look at interference. Of an incident and reflective wave. Reflected wave that are identical other than traveling in opposite directions. We can have the incident wave. We have it's a traveling wave. We have its displacement as a function of position and time can be written as a times the sine of kx minus omega t. We're not going to worry about the phase constant here. We're just going to say that it's equal to zero. So this would be traveling to the right or in the positive direction. Well, then we have the reflected wave. So we'll call that y1, or reflected wave y2. It has a function of position and time. It's identical, so it has the same amplitude, has the same wave number k, but it's traveling in the negative x direction, so instead of minus, we have a plus here, and it has the same angular frequency time, and we'll say that it is in phase with the other one. And the in phase part really depends on um, some boundary conditions, whether it actually happens or not. But we're just going to assume for this particular scenario that they're traveling towards each other and they're in the same phase. So what does this do? Well, we have the <coughs> resultant wave.
sigma y of x and t will be equal to y1 of x and t plus y2 of x and t by the rules of superposition for waves. We just add the individual waves together. So what do we get out of this? Well, this is then going to be equal to a times the sine of kx minus omega t plus a times the sine of kx plus omega t. All right, so how are we going to add those both together? There's a common factor of a, but we've got the sine of two different things. One has kx minus omega t, one has kx plus omega t. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so how are we going to add those? Well, there has to be some nice trigonometric identities um, that we could utilize. So this is what we're going to do is we're going to break out a trig ID. You have to look it up, but there's one out there, and it says this. Trig ID. We have the sine of A plus the sine of B is equal to two times the sine of the quantity of A plus B divided by two times cosine of a minus b over 2. A nice trig identity there. Whew. So how are we going to use this? Well, we're going to say let a be equal to kx minus omega t and b be equal to kx plus omega t. And we're going to put that in there. This expression right here C what indeed a sine kx minus omega t plus a sine kx plus omega t is. That factor A, capital A, is just the amplitude. It's overall outside, so really this is A here and an A here, capital A. We just have 2A times the sine. So what do we get? Sigma y of x and t is going to be equal to 2. I'm going to go ahead and factor out that A over here, the amplitude, and just say, hey, we're going to get a 2a right there. And then we've got the sine of the quantity a plus b divided by 2. So we have kx minus omega t plus kx plus omega t divided by 2, a plus b over 2, times the cosine of a minus b over 2. So we've got the cosine of kx minus omega t minus b. So minus b is going to be minus kx minus omega t. Minus kx minus omega t. That's all divided by 2 as a well. So we can start cleaning this up a little bit. And what do we have? Well, in this one we've got a kx minus omega t plus kx plus omega t minus omega t plus omega t. That's going to cancel out with that. And we've got kx plus kx, 2kx, divided by 2 is just going to give us kx. So for this one, we can have that it's equal to 2a times the sine of kx. And we come over here, we have a plus kx and a minus kx. I should say minus, minus, sorry about that. Minus kx minus kx, and then a minus omega t and a minus omega t. So this gives us minus 2 omega t, and that divided by 2 just gives us minus omega t, and the kx's cancel out. So we've got the cosine of minus 2 omega t divided by 2, which is say minus omega t. Minus omega t. You say, oh, minus omega t, what are we going to do with the minus sign in there? Well, cosine's an even function, right? So the cosine of minus omega t is the same thing as the cosine of plus omega t. <coughs> cosine of minus omega t is equal to the cosine of omega t. Cosine is an even function. So in the end, we've got this. Sigma y of x and t the resultant wave that is the vector, what is the sum of the two individual waves through space and time, is then going to be equal to 
2a times the sine of kx times the cosine of omega t. You say, whoa, that looks kind of crazy. What does that mean? Well, the meaning of this is ultimately what we were showing in those standing waves. This is the expression of a standing wave. What's the equation? How do I know that this is the equation of a standing wave? Well, let's look at this really carefully for a moment. This portion here, the sine of kx, only depends on the position. <coughs> Here's the time dependence right here, cosine of omega t. Well, omega is the angular frequency of the oscillations of either one of the waves, right? Which is correlated with its period, and then multiplied by t. This is the variance time-wise, and this varies between one and negative one time-wise, right? Well, if we think about it, this here, 2a sine of kx, the only variance with respect to this is with position. So you look at a certain position, stick an x there, and you're at some position, and you will get what the variance of that position is time-wise in terms of its displacement. Well, the sine of kx is going to vary between 1 zero, negative one. So it has a maximum value of plus or minus one. It has a minimum value of zero. At certain positions x, this is gonna be zero. And what's zero times cosine of omega t? That's zero. That means that a certain position x or certain positions x, we get no displacement overall. And if you recall, when that was wave was going like this, there were those certain spots where there was no up and down motion of it. You can call those nodes. Those are those positions that have no overall displacement. And then there's certain positions at some given x where we get a maximum displacement. When this is plus or minus one, we've got 2a, 2a cosine of omega t. So we've got that the oscillations will go between two times the amplitude of a single wave and negative two times the amplitude of a single wave, up and down. And then we've got variations in between zero and well, 2a for the overall amplitude. But this is what we get. This is amplitude at a given position x. And this is the time component or the time varying oscillation. That's what we've got here. This is a standing wave. So kind of look at this. Like Hey, where are the nodes and where are the anti-nodes? So let's draw some pictures here. Get this concreted out. So, this is what we end up getting. like this, and then what? Well, really, this is what we get. We get these loops, or these individual portions here, that oscillate up and down. This here, times the amplitude of one of the singular waves, and this would be negative 2a. Some positions, like here, here, 
here, here, here, here, have no variation in their displacement. The displacement is always equal to zero. At some locations in between these two locations that don't undergo displacement, right here, we get the maximal amount of displacements that are occurring over time. And it just oscillates up and down with an angular velocity or angular frequency, excuse me, of omega. Everything does, but to different degrees. So right here, this element on the, on the string oscillates like this. This element oscillates like this. And then we've got these locations here. We'd say no displacement. No displacement, no displacement, no displacement, no displacement on all of those locations. No displacement ever, and then maximal displacement. So what we tend to do here, tend to do what we do do, is name these specific locations. So we've got nodes are the locations. No displacement. And then anti nodes are the locations with maximal displacement. would be plus or minus 2a. Then we have everything in between. So we can just kind of go through this and mark in where are the nodes. We've got a node there. There's an anti-node there. There's a node there. There's an anti-node there. There's a node there. Anti-node. Node. Anti-node. Node. Anti-node. So we use n's and a's to really sort of cement in where those spots are. That's it. So what we can start looking at is where the nodes and the anti-nodes actually occur. So, this is our standing wave here. <clears throat> All right, so let us look at that. Where do the nodes occur? So we're gonna focus on this expression, this 2a sine of kx times the cosine of omega t. That's gonna tell us where the nodes occur. So there's our expression for the standing wave, and we have the nodes. equal to zero, it doesn't matter what time you're looking at it or what the amplitude is overall of an individual wave, you will always get zero out of that. No displacement. So that sigma y of x and t is equal to zero for all times. So how do we get zero out of the sign of kx? Well, let's think about this, right? We've got x is equal to zero, because the sine of zero is zero. So when it comes down to be, when is kx gonna be equal to zero? Or, I shouldn't say or, this is from, Hey, x is equal to zero, x is equal to zero, so that's one of the positions. But what about the other ones? Well, what other values of the sign of what give us zero? What other values are pi, right? Or three pi. 
or pi pi, or excuse me, pi, or two pi, or three pi. Got a little bit ahead of myself. We have ultimately integer multiples of pi will give us zero. So we get k x is equal to n pi. We get the sine of k x is equal to zero. This is if. So great. All we have to do is say what n is, where n is an integer. Sure. n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. Great. So that's it. What could we do with that? Well, that says then that the other locations for the nodes are where x is equal to n pi over k. Then we've got something else. What about k? k is related back to the wavelength. k itself is equal to 2 pi divided by a lambda. So if we put in that for k, we'll get ourselves x is equal to ah, n lambda over 2. Where again, n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3. So, look at this. We get integer multiples of half wavelengths is where the nodes occur at. Is that true? One of them is at x equals 0. That's great. That's for n equals 0. And then n equals 1. Well, n equals 1 says x is lambda over 2, half of a wavelength. What's a full wavelength? A full wavelength would be from here to here. That'd be one full wavelength. Half of it goes to right there. Hey, there's another node there. We add on another half of a wavelength for n equals 2, and we get x is equal to lambda. Yeah, there's a node there. Add on another half wavelength, 3 lambda over 2. There's another node. There's another node. There's another node. So the nodes you can find that expression is equal to n pi, excuse me, n lambda over 2. One second. All right, then, we get our locations of nodes. What about the antinodes? Well, you can sort of see that the antinodes should be right in between successive nodes. And if the nodes are separated by lambda over 2, we should have that this first one ends up at lambda over 4, quarter of a wavelength. And then from here to here would be another half of a wavelength. So this would be 3 lambda over 4, 3 quarters of a wavelength, 5 lambda over 4, 7 lambda over 4, and so on. We want to be able to get that, right? So, let us go ahead and look at that. Where do the antinodes? Well, they're going to occur where the sine of kx is equal to plus or minus 1. The maximum that it could be, or the absolute value of the maximum of what it could be. When this is plus or minus 1, this will be plus or minus 2a, where 2a is the maximum distance away from the equilibrium position. So, antinodes occur. where kx, excuse me, the sine of kx is equal to plus or minus 1. So that sigma y of x and t is equal to plus or minus 2a times, again, yeah, the cosine of omega t, but that's just the oscillatory nature. Overall, those positions are going up and down. Sometimes they're zero, sometimes they're maximum. But there's the amplitude overall. So when does the sine of kx equal plus or minus 1? Well, that's going to be when kx is equal to pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. 
5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, etc. This occurs when, I shouldn't say when, let's say where, kx is equal to n pi over 2, but now we have to put a restriction on n. It's not just an integer, it is an odd integer. Where n is equal to odd integer. n is equal to 1, 3, 5, 7, dot, dot, dot. Because if we throw in even integers, then what do we end up getting? What we end up getting back um, where some of the nodes are, too. So we can go ahead and once again mess with this and with k being equal to 2 pi divided by lambda, we can say antinodes are at divide over by k and then k is equal to 2 pi over lambda and we get ourselves n lambda over 4 x is equal to n lambda over 4, where n is equal to 1, 3, 5, 7, dot, 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 odd, ohm. So we go ahead, throw in n is equal to 1. There's quarter of a wavelength right there. n is equal to 1. We throw in n is equal to 3. The next that could be, we get three quarters of a wavelength. This is one quarter, there's one half, there's three quarters. There's the next antinode. Put in n is equal to five. Well, five, we would have right there. Six, right there. Seven, no, no six, sorry. Got to hand myself five, then seven, then nine, and so on and so on. So successively, they are separated by half of a wavelength. It's just the first one shifted over by lambda over four, a quarter of a wavelength relative to the first node. And there we go. So the main point with this is that we can mathematically determine where the nodes and antinodes are. And I was going to say, yeah, this is a standing wave. It's just a succession of nodes and antinodes. And something else of interest is that the angular frequency or the period of the oscillations of the individual um, sections is the same as the period of the waves themselves. Omega, same omega in the overall outcome as was with the individual waves that we added together. And that's because they had the same angular frequencies to begin with. All right, so some nice standing waves. Stand in wave. All right, take care.